What up, witches? Happy Wednesday. I hope your first week or so of the new 2020 year is turning out really awesome. I've got my rescue dog, elderly dog, Grizzly here, who's a chocolate lab. So if you hear any strange noises, it's probably him. Welcome to Wednesday, witches. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whoa. I wish I knew how to edit so I could edit that out. <coughs> mm. Today, I don't know what we're smoking because we, um, out. <coughs> Excuse me. Give me a moment. <coughs> Ooh, thank you. Pardon me. Allergies and sinuses are really stressing me out today. Okay, so when I get some new weed, I put it in my heart pipe on the altar. Isn't it gorgeous? That lover gave me as a gift for my birthday, I think, one year. And anytime I get some new medicine, I put it in the heart pipe. And I put it on my altar in front of my uh, goddess images. And it's a working altar in my private space. And this is my gift of thanks to her and request that it keep coming. So I send, I give this, put this on the altar. This normally never leaves the altar. And it stays on there as an offering to her of gratitude, thankfulness, and, re, and just, you know, please keep it coming. Keep the medicine flowing. Now, the only time it comes off the altar is when I'm doing an instructional. But when we run low, we go request the goddess to share in her offering. And she's like, sure, I've had plenty. And, of course, I grew it, you know. So we uh, will enjoy this if we're out. And we normally stand at the altar and, you know, give the smoke back and pray. And So it's not just a, here's some for later, I'm going to go in there and use it. It's like a respectful, um, grounding gratitude experience and it's emergency stash so there's my heart pipe it's pr i have no idea what it is because it's been sitting there for a couple of weeks so i saw also another reason i'm really coughing is because when your medicine your marijuana or your cannabis whatever gets dried out it's a lot harsher and even though that's another reason we cough your your lungs have this warm rush of medicine that's hitting it all at once instead of a gentle slow so you have to kind of modify how you do that and if it's a very strong medicine it's like a shock because it's environmental change not necessarily because it's bad for you because it's like you know like you get a bucket of cold water thrown on you so that's what we're smoking today i think it is darth raven from one plant but i'm not positive it tastes like a darth raven has a damp earthy taste which lover prefers and i like the fruity sweet flavors so that's what we're smoking and today we're going to do tips tricks and hints on your smoking apparatuses and inhalations and my personal research and uh, guided knowledge that I have received about this inhalation me personally with the flower is the best way and the only way I prefer to do it. Um, I make ointments for healing, but those topicals, vapes, uh, tinctures, that has no, almost no effect on me, not that I can tell. So smoking the dried flower is my preferred method because it's the one that actually works for me. It's the fastest, it's the fastest period for everyone. Um, and my favorite uh, ways to do it in the order of the healthiest to the least would be stone. Like you see my soapstone pipe that's my favorite. This is um, rose quartz. You know, love. Love, self-love, universal love, agape love, whatever. But pure love is rose quartz. So if you... If you smoke out of a stone, I would prefer that you start with soapstone because it's hand carved. You can get it cheap. Uh, there's, it's not a composite. It's a natural stone. But the take drawbacks from that 
and it's because it is the healthiest but the drawbacks is it's soft if you scrape too hard you can you can cut into the pipe when you're cleaning it if you drop it on a stone or a hard surface it will it it most likely will break so you have to be respectful of it you have to take care of uh, that piece of Mother Earth if you're going to use stone, which is the healthiest. And another trick and tip I need you to understand is when you're purchasing anything to inhale, you need to make sure it's close to as natural as possible. Excuse me, I'm fighting with my allergies so bad. I'm getting immunization therapy for my allergies, so hopefully you won't have to hear this nasally cough and sneeze and all this stuff on these videos in the future. So, if you want to get a stone pipe, Please make sure that it is a hand-carved uh, actual stone. Read the description, where it's coming from, on anything you put on it in your body. Where it's coming from, how it's made, the description of it. Ask questions if you need to, if you're not sure. Because a lot of pipes, when you're looking for crystals, stone pipes, they'll have... I've seen amethyst and fluorite and some other ones that were either made out of a like a chemical resin composite... Or it was the dust mixed with the resin. And you don't want to be smoking out of that resin crap either. So be careful because it ain't really hurts my feelings. I can tell you pipe's not real because it's going to make you mad and you ain't going to believe me and it's going to hurt your feelings. And the last time somebody showed me a crystal pipe that wasn't real, I said, oh, that's nice. And it clearly wasn't, but you know you got to be careful who you talk to and what you tell to some people because some people don't want to hear the truth and it can break your friendship. So you got to pick your battles. So we're going to go stone is the healthiest type of pipe, hand carved natural stone, okay, because it doesn't have all the chemicals and the plastics and the weird horrible crap that comes in everything else. Stone, after stone glass, Pyrex glass, high heat glass, again, cleans easily, excuse me, is safe for you to inhale through, is heat, heat and cold safe, doesn't have the chemicals, okay. Then uh, I would go, which I don't like wood at all. And I, d I do have, like the bong, you've seen a glass pipe. Everybody's seen a glass pipe. It looks like it's a, you know, you could Google it. Uh, I got this wood one. It's rosewood. It's lover's pipe. It's called the, the voodoo pipe. It was purchased in New Orleans um, through a lapidary shop that we visited. And I don't like wood because wood holds moisture. It holds moisture, bacteria, mold, and fungus can easily grow in here. However, it's hand-carved and it's natural, so you're not going to get the chemicals. Keep this, if you have wood, keep it in a dry place. Make sure you clean it very well and uh, often, if possible. And just keep it dry, man. You got to, because, you know, the resin and the slobber builds up. You need to keep it run through and dry. Cotton. 100% cotton um, pipe cleaners would be a good tip to have in that. And, uh, yeah, I just don't like wood because, and I, I rarely will smoke out of this um, because of that. Because, you know, things is probably living in there. No, thank you. But that over a plastic or resin pipe any day. Because this, you know, there's some grody stuff you probably don't want to smoke in here. But it's a lot better than the chemicals that are probably going to give you lung cancer. I'm going to just be straight with you. And now when we're going to talk about some cleaning, all right, so we got the stone is your healthiest, glass is your second choice, wood, if you don't have a, any other choice, don't fuck with resin or plastic of any kind. Oh, um, lay, um, and the one I travel with and is also safe, but it has the, the pop-in metal filter, which I don't, basket, uh, bowl that I don't like because I don't know what kind of metal it is and what we're inhaling, but... You know, I can't take my stones, pipes, and the wood one either because they're fragile. You have to be respectful of them. So I take uh, one that's it's, uh, rubber. Silicone. Silicone also is, is the safest. Uh, it would be right behind stone, so stone and glass. Silicone. Your very last, don't touch resin and plastics. Please don't mess with that. Please, please, please. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Cleaning. I get a bunch of these. Uh, I got these from uh, Mini Moons Trading Post. My friend um, White Feather and Kim owned, and they had all of these. I think they were a dollar a piece, and I try to support local business as much as possible, of course, and I adore them. They're wonderful people. They're healers themselves. Um, but just, just it's just a metal pipe cleaner. You can get it online as well. 
Um, not really keen on what this is made out of, but it's not touching any heat. It's not coming in contact with my, you know, in innards or my outards. So, and it's just a cleaning tool. And you run this sucker through there, up through there, swab your bowl, you know, have a cotton, 100% cotton napkin. My friend April handmade me some dishcloths and hand towels because I'm, I'm moving, I want to move away from paper paper towels and napkins because that's just wasting trees even though we can burn them safely but I use cotton because you can wash these over and over and over and you're saving trees you know um so I use that rub it through here and now when you clean all your pipes you're going to swish this stuff around or put them in a bag or a bowl, glass bowl don't mess with metal bowls if you have to with any kind of your chemicals if possible um, this is called 420 Cleaner. This is my favorite. This is what I get. I get it for 10 bucks from the Jeffafa at the Tobacconist near me. It's called 420 Formula, Formula 420. It's, uh, it's safe for all your pipes except plastic and resin, which I'm, throw them away. Please don't use them. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not playing with that. Um, you can use it, you can dip your brush in there and run it through your wood. Um, and so stone glass metal i take a little tiny glass jar i got essentials out of oils out of a long time ago put this in there put my brushes in it it's on the sink and it's bing bang boom you swish it around in your bong or whatever and it's amazing 420 cleaner it's worth it now some people have told me that they have good luck with coarse kosher table salt and a high con high percentage rubbing alcohol or a high percentage uh drinking alcohol and squishing it around but that doesn't work for me at all okay and i like to keep my stuff clean because i'm not trying to get no infections and make people sick with my smoking apparatus that's another thing you need to keep them clean your bong water dumped out every time you use it rinse it and store it if you don't have a chance to clean it or it's not that bad fine it needs to be dried out every time you're done uh stone and crystal pipes um, you know, swab it through every couple times you, you smoke through, whatever. Keep it clean because you can get pneumonia and all kinds of infections from not keeping your smoking utensils clean. So, we're going to start with that. And then cotton um, pipe cleaners are expensive here and you don't get very many and I clean our stuff regularly. So, this is the best way to go because you can use it over and over. And you want to try to keep your trash down and you want to keep things that you can recycle if possible. <clears throat> this is a pipe cleaner tool it's got like a little scoop and this and a little tamper and I thought all I need is the this you know that part kind of thing but I use all of this for many reasons and when you when you get you know a collection built up or a favorite one you're gonna understand that this is awesome because you can just run it around in there when you get done and wipe it with your cotton towel so that's that's a pipe tool. You can get those everywhere too. These are jeweler's tweezers. And they're cheap online. eBay is where I get my stuff if I can't find it locally. Um, the trip the trick and tip about eBay is you're gonna get it direct from the manufacturer, most likely in China, because that's where everything comes from these days. Um, but you'll get it straight from the person making these. Or the factory that makes it so it's gonna cost you like a dollar instead of 25 or whatever and but it might take a month to get to you or some kind sometimes it's not often anymore it'll get lost but you'll get a refund if you don't get it so you know it's up to you you can purchase um, in the United States or in your country only in the settings in eBay if you'd like to do that but I get everything straight from the people that make it if possible even online and it's cheaper that way. And I'll wait a month to get it at any emergency. So, uh, jewelers, tweezers. So, when you pull out a screen and you're burning it, you don't have to get close to you. And when you're burning a screen, a little torch, butane torch, refill it. I'm trying to keep my trash down, right? So, butane torch, it's, you know, and you can, you know, this one needs to be refilled. I'm terrible at refilling butane. So, Blover's got to fill this one. But, these little butane torches here you can get them at a gas station dollar store anywhere and it's it does the screen very quickly you can you know target it or whatever and then you done wipe it take your when your screens burning take your little brush get all the dust and ash off wipe it with your cotton cloth slam it back in there 
You can use this tool to place it. I just use my finger to get it more accurate. Now, as far as filter goes, we talked once before about filters. If you're going to buy a metal, little metal circular filters that go in your pipes, the best ones if you're going to go that route is um, the... I don't think they make pure copper or silver because they're not that, that heat resistant. Um, but they do make some that's like a copper mixed in there. I believe they're called brass. So if you need to use a metal screen, that one is the least likely to give you the chemical exposure and the toxins that you're trying to stay away from. However, I found there are glass honeycomb screens, which I don't have one. I will get one soon. And then we have daisy screens that are made out of the Pyrex glass. And they're little. They look just, just like a flower. And I'm going to turn these around on the jeweler's tweezers so maybe you can see the stem of it. See? Ah, I don't know why I don't, it won't focus, but it looks like a little glass flower, okay? And here's what you do with that. These are the best way to go. They, I believe they come in different sizes. I got some too small for my soapstone pipe, but perfect fit for the wood voodoo pipe and in my crystal pipe. And they don't move at all, especially when you smoke it. It gets a little resin and it, it keeps the dry flower from falling through. Um, but the smoke can come through and the resin actually sticks it in place. But since my pipes are so clean and the voodoo pipe's got a... Um, the soapstone has a bigger hole. It falls out if you dump it over or you tap it too hard. It might fall out and you have to be careful, I do, the way you stir and not hit it because it will it can upset it if it doesn't fit tightly or uh, is too small, then you can get some fallout. But this is how they go. I hope you can see this. Man, it's annoying because I don't focus. I have a little, little daisy screen right in the hole of that one. And this one's lover's pipe is called the infinity see and it fits perfect so and there's no resin in this though it's a clean clean bowl but there's a little daisy screen has a hole in the middle down there if if i can get the phone to look at it but you take the little daisy screen get your jeweler's tweezers this is another reason these are awesome take your jeweler's tweezers get your little hole lined up and you can take your tweezers and plop it in there and then you know fix it how you want and that's perfect this one even though it doesn't have a resin to get it adhered it fits really well and it the air flows right around it but all your dry bud and ash stay in the pipe and you're not getting all those chemicals from heating and expanding metals so there's a daisy screen that's glass and that's pretty awesome so we're talking about the healthiest type of pipes. I prefer the crystals because not only is it healthier for you, but when I'm bringing this through, I'm putting the breath of life through Mother Earth using fire and air and, you know, and then the water comes from the air as well, I guess. If you want to use element, you can, you know, wipe it with water. But you have your elemental circle of life right here in the crystal and this one I'm pulling in love every time I use it when I exhale I'm exhaling love because of the energy resonance and the pure intention of love in this pipe so now that we got our tips and tricks about your smoking apparatuses and your medicating I hope you make healthy choices doing that and I want to say I'm wearing for the witchy side crystals of course are my thing and today I'm wearing the color orange because it is a sunshine warm color and I'm wearing citrine and the citrine necklaces um, and citrine has the energy of the sun and a warming element and I'm feeling blue and sad because I've had a, a death recently in my family and it's also kind of damp and cold to me here even though it's not environmentally and that's how I'm feeling in my bones and my favorite one of my favorite citrine this is waxed hemp cord with citrine mainstone and then rutilated quartz for the accent piece on the bottom and it has brass beads and here's the slide adjustment and I'm showing you this because I want to give a shout out to the company Arave you can find them on Facebook A-R-A-V-A-Y I believe and they make hand make these jewelry that it's a family thing and they custom make all kinds of boho hippie 
um, awesome, flowy, beautiful clothes. And I want to give them a shout out because they're beautiful people and I appreciate their craftsmanship. And this beautiful, uh, sunny piece of citrine that helps energize and put a little sunlight in my spirit. So thank you, Arave, for my piece. I still love it and appreciate it very much. So check them out, please. So I'm using citrine today to put a little warmth and sunshine in for myself. It's a stone you can use to bring in that sunshine, warm energy, or focus into anything you're doing. That's my personal relationship with it. But if you want to know more, check it out. And anything anyone tells you, please learn on your own. Don't take blind faith anyone's word for anything. Now, I don't mean be hyper crazy about it and look up every word everybody says. But I mean, when somebody's telling you something religious, spiritual, or some kind of whatever, things like that, check it out. You really need to form your own opinion and be your own person when it comes to those kind of things. I'm just telling you from my own experience so I can pass on the knowledge to you. You know, ancestral kind of way because we all brothers and sisters whether we like it or not. And now that we've talked about that, we got that out of the way, I really want to turn your focus to Australia. Australia is burning. It's losing a lot of critical endangered species and wildlife, people, homes, um, food, crops. It's, it's, it's devastating and it's heartbreaking. And I would implore you, if you can do nothing but pray and send healing energy and pray for rain to stop the fires, please do because Australia needs your help. And if it was your country or your land or your city or your home that was on fire, you would be in the same desperate feeling and situation. And I would hope that someone be, be, would be compassionate enough to at least pray for you. If you can, donate anything to help with the water supplies, the firefighters, food, shelter, recovery, and healing for the animals and people that are escaping. Please donate. Check out legitimate ways to donate directly to the fire departments in Australia. Ask a friend, read posts, but make sure you are donating to someone that will go directly to because there's always, it's really sad and it's kind of sick that there are fake sites that will take donations for things like this and you not can't be really sure who they are. So look them up. Uh, NSW New South Wales um, Volunteer Fire Department uh, is one that is legit. Uh, Pink, the the um, singer, donated recently. There is, um, I can't remember all of them. I shared a bunch of links on my page. I will try to copy them to this video and send links that I know that you can help donate. But please, keep Australia in your prayers. Please donate or whatever you can. If it's simply just getting out the word that they need help, post about it. That would be amazing too. So please, Australia, you're in my prayers you have my love, you have my support, and I'm trying on my part across the world to do what I can to, su to support and help. And I love you all very much. Thank you so much for watching. If you want another Weed Witches and Wednesdays, please let me know. Like this video, share, comment, let me know. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week.